everybody, it's Carly back here at Dawson's Margaret with another little mini episode of uh, Wine Classes. Today we're here with Michael from Grapes of Spain. We're going to talk to you a little bit about some Tempranillos. Hello everyone, it's Carly Said. My name is Michael. I work for a company called Grapes of Spain. We're a Spanish wine importer based out of Lord, Virginia. Founded in 2000 by a man named Aurelio Cabasrero, whose primary goal was to uh, educate and bring in a lot more quality Spanish wines to introduce to the American market. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Spain and why we, have, we chose these wines to show you today. So Spain has a rich history and culture, and they're very loyal to, the, to their traditions. And Spain is home to a wide uh, variety of different grape species that are only indigenous to Spain. One of which I wish to speak about is Tempranillo. Tempranillo, otherwise known as the king of Spain as far as grape varieties are concerned, can be found in all different corners of the country. And, but it goes by many, many different wines, many, many different names. And three primary examples today are Tempranillo, Sensibel from La Mancha, and Tinto de Toro from Toro. And there's a reason why they are called the three different those three different names, not just where they're not just the dialect or the region they're from, but because depending on the climate, uh, the soil, the altitude, and the weather, they the grape variety uh, actually exhibits vastly different flavor profiles. So although you're drinking the same grape, it tastes different depending on where it's from, and that's the reasoning for the name. They're essentially clones of one major species of Tempranillo. So. The grapes that I have for you today, the wines, the Solarce, this is from Rioja, the Ea, this is a, a wine made from Sensibel from La Mancha, and the Elias Mora, this is a wine made from a grape called Tinta de Toro from a region called Toro. They're all denomination of origin, or denomination of origin of So Tempranillo in most regions, especially in Rioja, is known to have a very red fruit quality. You get a lot of red cherry, cranberry, uh, and with a little bit of earthiness to it as well and a lot of oak influence. But that is different when you go to, let's say, La Mancha, where it's a lot warmer, uh, lower lower elevation, sees a lot more sunshine. The grape has a, a lot more presence of fruit, specifically blue, blue fruit, but it's very elegant, it's very smooth, it's easy to drink, it has good balance. And then when we get to Toro, Toro is a very unique region in itself. They call it Tinta de Toro here because the grape drinks like, like Tempranillo does, and doesn't drink like Tempranillo anywhere else in the country. It drinks very full body as a wine with a lot of power, a lot of depth, a lot of dark fruit forward flavors. So Rioja is known to be, uh, is kind of compared to be like the Bordeaux or Napa Valley of Rioja. It's the most famous wine growing region in the country and uh, majority of, of Tempranillo, uh, they were known to produce world-class red wines of Tempranillo in this region. And as I said before, the wines are aged in long periods of oak, but they exhibit more of a red fruit characteristic with that earthiness. So the first wine I have for you is the Solarse. This is from a, uh, a boutique winery in, Ria in Rio Havaja, certified that uh, focuses on organically grown certified organic fruit. This is a blend of mostly Tempranillo and Rioja. They blend their wines just a little bit. This is Tempranillo with a little bit of Garnacha, Graciano, and Venezuela. It sees about eight months in oak. Wine has great flavor, great presence of fruit quality, very elegant, very pretty, almost full on the nose. It's like a, a, a smelling into a bouquet of flowers, but with a lot of red fruit characteristic. And you do get a little presence of spice and vanilla that you get from the aging in long periods of time in American or French oak barrels. So Rioja, this is your classical style of temper. Although this is more of a modern producer, but Rioja is your more classical expression of how temper you usually taste within those more well-known regions. So this is a fantastic quality wine. I highly recommend it next time you come into Dawson's, into, into Dawson's Market. Absolutely phenomenal, very good value, and I guarantee you'll be impressed. If you're looking for something that's very suave, very soft, and easy to drink, but it still has good depth and good grip. The next one is the Ea. It's pronounced exactly like it's spelled. Ea. 
but this is a wine made from La Mancha. La Mancha is uh, north center Spain. It's the largest wine growing region in the country. Very warm region uh, that sees an intense amount of sunshine. So the grapes that grow here, uh, the best quality grapes grown here are grown at higher elevations. This one's grown about 1,700 feet above sea level. Because of the intense amount of sunshine, the grapes ripen here a little bit better, and it produces a, a, a quality, a, a wine that is really robust in fruit characteristic. While Rioja tends to have that red fruit, I get blue fruit on this right away. You get your, your fig, your blueberry, your plum, and of course you get that element of baking spices from the uh, French oak and a little bit of vanilla from the American oak influence as well. This is a very easy drink, easy uh, wine to drink, very flavorful, perfect for any day of the year, honestly, even uh, during some of your cooler summer and summer days. Pairs perfectly with a wide variety of foods. Tempranillo does really well with pork, lamb, beef, uh, duck, you name it. I personally like it with chorizo. I think chorizo is one of the best pairings you can have with this. Wonderful nose, easy drinking. Hope you enjoy. Also, uh, focuses on organically, done, organically grown fruit and organic winemaking practices. Sensi Bell was the name. Now, this one is the most interesting in my opinion. This is the Venus Elias Mora. It's a winery that dates back to the year 2000. It was founded by a female winemaker named Victoria Benavides. She focused on producing quality expressions of Tinto de Toro. Tempranillo once again, but in this region it's called Tinto de Toro for a very good reason. It doesn't drink like, like Tempranillo anywhere in the country because Toro is essentially a high elevated desert plateau. It's a very small region filled with sand and stones, hot days with very cold nights. So the grapes have adapted in a way to give it a vastly different flavor profile. It has smaller berries, thicker skins to juice ratio, give the wine a lot more natural tannin, a little bit more robust in power and flavor, a lot deeper body, darker fruit forward flavors. It almost drinks more like a Cabernet Sauvignon in terms of style and depth. This is, a per this is perfect for anyone who loves a Cabernet, someone who likes a more powerful, full, fuller body wine. This is perfect for, like I said, steak, lamb, uh, pork, or, or chorizo. Wonderful aroma, black currant, uh, uh, black cherry, uh, and, uh, and some plum as well. But this wine is very well balanced, has good acidity, has good tannin, and it's still, but it's still very soft on the palate and easy to drink. So those are just three common examples of, of Tempranillo and how different they can be in every single region in Spain. I hope you've enjoyed and learned a little bit from this video. All these wines are available in Dawson's Market and their organic section. So we hope you come on, uh, by and give them a shot. They're, they'll blow your socks off. Cheers. Michael's my favorite person to describe wine. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Michael. My pleasure. Just so you guys know, every like, share, uh, tag that you guys um, with this video 